Hey, it's George the Tech. I thought I would share with you guys a little sneak preview of a product that I've been co-developing with vocalbooth.com. The product hasn't been named yet, and by the time you see this video, hopefully we'll have a proper name, a way to buy it, and pricing. Right now, that's all being worked out as of the time of this recording. But I've assembled together some of the tests that I did with our new products while I was visiting their factory. Now you can check out the factory tour video by clicking the link. I'm gonna bring in a few clips so you can hear the way the microphones sound in these spaces without treatment and with our improved treatment added in. So you'll really hear a before and after with these microphones. And these are mics that are challenging to use in small acoustical spaces because they have a very wide cardioid pickup pattern. So they hear a lot of the space around them. I think you'll hear the difference and I think you'll be impressed. Now we are in the 4x4 uh, vocalbooth.com. I'm doing the hand span pinky to thumb distance from the mic. And this is a Rode NT1 5th gen. All right, so here let's do an acoustical test. So this is with the stock foam in the 4x4 uh, vocalbooth.com. Now we're speaking at a moderate voice, it's moderate level. Now we're speaking at a medium level. Now we're speaking at an elevated level. Now we're getting into the highest levels. Now we're getting into a shouting level. Now we're getting into a drill sergeant. Get down, get down. One, two, one, two, one, two, 10, 10, 10. That's the sound of the Rode NT1 fifth gen. Pinky to thumb span in, the, in a off axis slightly to the right in a vocalbooth.com four by four with the stock pyramid foam. All right. Now we are in the vocal booth 4x4 booth with our new 4 inch thick panels on the walls. We're going to do the same distance, same placement as before, and we're going to do the same kind of level tests. Now we're speaking at a narrative level, that's like a standard voiceover level, full voice, nothing crazy. Now we're going to amp things up a bit. We're going to take it up to another level. I'm going to do what a lot of voice actors do, which is stand back a bit farther from the mic. So now I'm even farther than a pinky thumb shaka. I'm about 10 inches uh, from the mic now. And I'm going to give it a little bit more juice. Here we go. Projecting louder. Here we're going to go. We're going to raise the energy. Take it up a little bit higher. Take it up a bit higher now. Now we're really getting up there. Now we're really pushing it. Now we're really getting into it. 10, 10, 10. One, two, three. Get down, get down. Go, 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 get down. And now I'm gonna stand back even farther out of, the, out of the proximity effect zone. One, two, one, two, get down. Now I'm in the proximity, much deeper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, two, ten, ten, ten. Complete and utter transformation of a 4x4 booth with just two panels. I also have a little clip here from an interview that I did from vocalbooth.com. He's the one that brought me up there, opened up the shop to me to come in and try new things with their booths, and had a lot of great things to say about the product and what we're working on together. So check that out. What's been really fun is being here physically on site, watching them come up with a product, putting them into play and letting them hear the difference. And yeah. like, they're like, <laughs> yeah. they're like, whoa, they, there's not a subtle difference. They can immediately mm -hmm. hear it. And um, it's been a fun discovery for me as well because we've used some products I'm familiar with as well as some other products, you know, substrates and materials that I haven't spent much time working with mm -hmm. and discovered some things. Like I, it was as much a discovery, it was as much a learning process and like an R&D process for me personally as it was for creating something for them, right. you know? So that's what's made it super cool. And now we're, we're standing in, a, you know, and we used, one of the key mics we used for all of our tests was a TLM 103. Mm -hmm. Freddie has one. We also used the Rode NT1 5th gen. He also has mm -hmm. one of those. I liked the sound of the NT1 and the TLM well, pretty closely equally, you know, wow. very similarly. And yep. I mean, you know me, I'm, I'm big on mic placement. We all are. We always talk about proximity. We talk about mm -hmm. being in the sweet spot. We talk about fist, uh, a fist and a thumb or a shaka pinky thumb, right? 
Right yep. now, we're in a four by six booth. We are minimum, I would say, 14 inches away mm -hmm. from the mic. We're standing on either, either side of the mic facing inward. So we're not close to this mic at all. And I don't know what you guys are picking up on your end. What do you think of the overall tonal balance? Does it sound colored? Does it sound natural? No, what do you hear? It sounds, it it sounds pretty like... Like not overly weighted on I on either frequencies, but really no presence of any bumps, and there's no bounces. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, yeah. And there's not really a yeah, boxy like bounce. Yeah, yeah. Sound. Which mic right. are you on now? Out of interest, we're on the TLM 103. Yeah. Okay. And I liked using yeah. this mic because I always consider this to be the torture test mic mm -hmm. for small yeah. booths. Unforgiving. Every time I get a recording with a 103 in a small, I'm like, oh boy, here we go. And so when Freddie said, I got one of those, I was like, that's, we're going to focus on that. And when he also just happened to have the NT1 as well, I said, well, that's a great one to test as well because it's the more affordable entry mic. Mm -hmm. It's it's still an excellent mic, just the price point. And um, so it was just a no-brainer to do all our tests with those two yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and kind of looking back at like when we decided to work together too. I mean, that's really been our culture and our and our, our philosophy on everything is is keep learning, keep moving forward. Uh, we're willing to have a conversation with just about anybody, um, even you, George. And when they were so willing to listen and pay attention and try something, and then put their money where their mouth is, bring me up here. Um, but they took that chance and that risk to to try something, experiment, and. Um, and the results speak for themselves right now. I mean, we're so we have a room that we've just made improvements by simply placing two new panels on the two walls. So we, it's sort of like a corner we've created with the new panels, as well as bolstering the ceiling mm -hmm. with a much heavier, thicker panel. So it's like a deeper ceiling cloud on the ceiling. So there's three new panels in here. Grand total is less than. I don't know, two by four, two by three-ish, and three-ish by four, five on the ceiling, yeah. something like that. But the, the difference was dramatic. It was a dramatic improvement. It yeah. was just really a big deal. Where was the difference out of interest? So the diff for me, the difference is in two main areas. One of them is just the general mid-range there was a, a still a little bit of mid-range ring that uh -huh. you would get in this room, especially if you got too far away from the mic. Uh -huh. Like, if you're in uh -huh. the sweet spot of the mic, you were fine. If you wanted to relax, get back off the mic, and this is really a big thing for video game producers they're all, and engineers, they're always acting the actor to stand back from the mic, give us some more space. That's where these booths don't, they don't hold up well. They, it gets very boxy, there's too much resonance because the two-inch foam on the walls can't control much energy below a roughly 1,000 hertz. After that, they don't do that much. So what we've done is we've now focused treatment that's broadband and now can work much below a 1,000 hertz. And it even goes deep enough that it, it seems to deal with as down to at least as low as my voice will go, which is roughly 80 hertz. Mm -hmm. um, and it flattens that out. Yeah. And, you know, the back of a TLM 103 is going to have, um, is going to be sensitive at low end, right? Because it's, when you're at low end, it's going to be essentially an omni mic, right? Like cardioid yeah. only matters for mid to high frequencies, right, Robert? Uh, the... Like generally, generally microphones, even even omni mics are more directional, often in one in more one direction. And then as the frequencies go down, they become truly omni. Yeah. So these mics are the back of them is always a big problem. They're going to mm -hmm. pick up any buildup. We've killed that low end buildup with these panels, mm -hmm. and uh, so it just it changes the character of the mic to mm -hmm. something way more linear. Like you were saying, it sounds more linear. It's not boomy. Um, and it has a, just a more natural tone, you know? And so that was the goal. It's just the goal was to do that. But then the goal, the next goal was to make it so vocal booth sales guys and everybody can just say, here's the package. Mm -hmm. We know that if you do this, we have the tests to prove it. Right. We yeah. get a lot of recording so that um, it's just, it's hard to back this stuff up with numbers. With numbers, yeah. With specs. Yeah. Right. It's just very hard to back it up. But when you literally record somebody and play it back, 
it's just an obvious, it's an obvious improvement. Yeah, and so. that's always really been a big thing for us. Is like, I mean, somebody needs to get their booth and be stoked with it. I mean, that's the beginning of our next sale, our future sales is really, the person who's getting the booth needs to be happy and needs to do what they expect it to do. And it needs to be just like mm-hmm. a valuable piece of their studio and, and of their career. It works particularly well in this booth because the walls are already treated with a two inch thick pyramid foam. Mm-hmm. So what we're installing is actually over top of the existing foam. So you're getting this hybrid of material and it ends up adding up to more than almost six inches thick. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason it's so incredibly effective. So what's the inside space that's that's kind of residual uh, left over? Like you're, it's six inches thick times two because you got two walls, so, so you're losing almost a foot? Yeah, so like looking directly in front of me, I got my hand on one of the panels and that's really directly behind our mic. It's like eight inches behind the mic right now. And then to my left on the shorter wall, we're facing the wide wall. On the shorter wall is the other uh, panel and they're horizontal, not vertical. Mm -hmm. And they're centered right on the mic. So equidistant top and bottom below them, above and below the mic. So you're focusing all of that treatment where it needs to be, right on the mic itself. And that's why I think it works so exceptionally well. And then the panel on the ceiling is of a, of a, of a similar, well, same, essentially same design. Mm-hmm. And we're both about six feet. And so that panel, even though it, sta- it hangs down four inches, is still a good six to seven inches above our heads right now. Mm-hmm. So it still doesn't feel, it doesn't feel claustrophobic or cramped. It still has a decent feeling. And that panel on the ceiling takes care of the pressure zones. I've been, I've been giving them like a crash course on some of the acoustic properties of spaces and chambers and dealing with pressure zones and room modes and all this stuff because that's what it comes down to. But they don't have to, we don't have to all understand the science of it. It's just cool to visualize and show them a, mm-hmm. on a computer like, okay, here's where these areas are and yeah. here's what we need to do. And it's been so cool to talk to somebody who uh, has a practical understanding of that because I can't tell you how many times over the years we get a call from, from somebody who like, they have no idea what they're talking about, but they've read all these buzzwords or they're, they're trying to get you know something for, uh, you know, uh, Techs hung, have told them that they need to get this. Yeah, they're hung up on some they're stats. They're hung up on some hung stats. They're hung up on some things. Yeah. It's like, in the end of the day, what does it really mean? And that's also, like, even just how we explain to some clients, like, um, they'll say, how much isolation, you know, I mean, how, what is the STC rating of your booth? And you're like, well, what are you dealing with? Let's just start yeah. right there. What's your source? And then, you know, then showing them some videos from some clients and being like, here's a guy with some construction right outside his room or a leaf blower, like the nemesis yeah. of the, the voiceover world. Right. You know, it's like, oh, these people are, they got voice, you know, leaf blowers out there, and they, they walk inside their booth, and it's, it's good to go. So mm-hmm. that kind of real-world application. And, and also, that's, that's, that's really a big thing of, like, you know, you're talking about our customer service and the way that we conduct our sales is we do just see ourselves as consultants. Uh, all of our sales guys are going to have teacher's hearts, and we never go for, you know, we, don't, we, we never go for the kill. I mean, it's not just about selling a booth. It's about creating a long-term client, and uh, that, that's worked out really mm-hmm. wonderful for us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the whole thing about the, all this is it really is a dark art. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole the treatment and you know acoustics in a booth, and uh, and and half the time, it, you know, if you build your own booth, you either get lucky or you don't get lucky. But yeah. I guess with your one, you don't have to worry about tossing the coin and hoping you get lucky because yeah, this is the idea it's with this improvement. There's a, a a very predictable good. We know this is we know this works, mm-hmm. and it's just on my own. I haven't had the time and space, tools, resources to do this type of experimenting. Like I could have done it over the period of time, but the fact that I could stay here for a couple of days, focus on this, have people f- making things for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's make some of those. Boom. Done. You know, it's just yeah. been an awesome experience uh, and really a great learning process too. Well, I hope you found that interesting and revealing. If you want to know more about what's coming, uh, how to get these new products, which work not only in the vocal booth booths, but really can work in any ISO booth with new brackets that we've also developed, let us know. Head over to vocalbooth.com, check out the website, contact them if you haven't seen what you're looking for yet, and their customer service is the best. They will get back to you and let you know when and how to get your hands on these new acoustic tuning products co-developed by George the Tech and VocalBooth.com. Thanks again for listening, everybody.